Welcome back, Irish fans. Breaking on Braves Boys podcast. Uh, Notre Dame released a non-conference schedule today, so I wanted to come on and break it down. I originally thought that I was just going to do the regular schedule when it came out, but uh, non-conference schedule is really important, especially for a school like Notre Dame, who is probably going to be on the fringe of the NCAA tournament or at least stay middle seed. Uh, non-conference schedule is really important, and kind of how they take advantage of it is really important. So uh, if you saw the tweet earlier, I lied, obviously, and I'm doing – a video just breaking down uh, the non-conference. So you look at the schedule, it started with Radford, Youngstown State, Indiana State, Lipscomb, where I actually am right now in my dorm room. If you notice, the background's a little different. Uh, that'll be a personal game for me. Bowling Green. And then they go to, I believe, New York, Brooklyn to play St. Bonaventure. Uh, Michigan State is the next game, and that's going to be one that's really tough and really important for Notre Dame. Then Boston University, Marquette. Georgia and Jacksonville to end off the non-conference slate, at least in the preseason. So, obviously, you look at the schedule and it's one of Notre Dame's easier non-conferences over the last few years. Uh, Mike Braze made the mistake recently of kind of stacking it too much. And you want to have good teams on your non-conference schedule, but uh, Notre Dame has had a few too many good teams on their non-conference schedule as of late. Last year wasn't too bad. Uh, There's a lot of winnable games that they didn't win, a lot of games they should have won by more that they – uh, underperformed in and that's kind of to be expected even though it is a veteran team that Notre Dame isn't going to come out of the gate super hot and I think uh, Mike Bray kind of realized that especially with a team that this year isn't quite as experienced although they are pretty experienced uh, they a lot of them haven't played together and uh, started off his schedule with five teams to start that they'll be heavily favored against uh, I think that's really going to help them you start out with Radford, Youngstown State, Indiana State, Lipscomb, Bowling Green uh, all teams that you can't sleepwalk against, but Notre Dame will be heavily favored against and can probably win even if they are completely sure of their lineups, their rotation, um, everybody's role. Uh, they'll probably just be able to get away on talent alone, uh, at least for a few of those games. And then the other ones they're going to have to be a little bit sharper for. Uh, but I do think it's good because it is a newer team than last year. Maybe your best player, J.J. Starling, is a freshman. Val Lubin's going to be borderline starter Marcus Hammond one of your best scores uh, none of them have completely defined roles yet and know how they play uh, in real games yet so I think it's really important that Notre Dame plays those games gives time to Mike Bray to test his lineups uh, kind of see how he wants to play uh, in terms of does he want to go five out most of the time does he want to go four out one in who's going to be that one in um, what are they going to do defensively when they get in a rut where are they going to go with the ball when they get in a rut offensively and I think that's really important to figure that out early before you have to play games that really count on the net. And uh, those games count if you lose, but uh, Notre Dame's going to have a tough time losing those unless those teams really come out and give them a fight just because Notre Dame is so talented, uh, even as opposed to past Notre Dame teams. So uh, I think it's really important that they kind of figure those things out early and uh, go to St. Bonaventure with a little bit more of an idea of who they are. St. Bonaventure is also a team that Notre Dame can kind of uh, rely on talent to beat. This isn't the same Bonaventure team of recent years where they're a borderline top 25 team. I don't think they're that good this year, but it certainly is a step up from a lot of these teams that they are playing in the first five games, especially against on a neutral slate. Notre Dame gets kind of a taste of a different environment, and that's going to be good for them as well. But St. Bonaventure is a game they should win just based on talent. Uh, then they go to MSU, and that's a game that you can't just win on talent. Uh, it's their toughest non-con game. Uh, they can win it. Uh, I do think it's a decent matchup for them. Michigan State doesn't have too much size to where Notre Dame can't deal with them. And Notre Dame, to me, has on par or better guards than Michigan State. So, obviously going to be a tough game. Michigan State's always tough. So, that'll be a huge test for them. All right, I was interrupted, but like I said, Michigan State, obviously their toughest non-conference game and one that can really help them if they win. But it's probably going to be a quad one game. And uh, it won't completely kill them if they lose. So that's one that uh, is going to be really interesting and one that is important uh, if Notre Dame wants to build that resume early because they don't have too many chances to do that. I do think schedule has a nice mix, though, of uh, games that are tough, uh, but games that are also winnable and can help you in the net. You're not getting killed with every loss in the net uh, like a team like Wake Forest was last year because they have at least some strength on that schedule after Michigan State. Boston U is a nice rebound game if that goes poorly. And uh, if it's a game that doesn't go poorly at Michigan State, 
uh, they can figure out that um, they kind of have something and continue to run with it against Boston U. Marquette, another game uh, after that, which is a nice sweet spot because Marquette's beatable, but that game also looks pretty good in the net. Uh, and I think that game is a home game, so it won't help them too much, but it's probably at least going to be a quad three or quad two game. Notre Dame can use as many of those as they can, uh, especially since the ACC may be a little bit better this year. Georgia, another one that's neutral, and uh, Georgia's not all that great. Uh, they do have some athletes, but Notre Dame is certainly more talented, and I think that, that can be another nice win for Notre Dame in the net that can help their resume early on, and that's what non-conference is about. It's not about going undefeated. You have to get wins that help you in March, and uh, Georgia's one of those games that may not be super tough for them, but uh, ends up as a game that looks really good on paper, and then Notre Dame ends uh, the non-conference with an ace on team. Jacksonville, which could be a little bit of a trap game. Uh, you can't sleep through that one at all, but Notre Dame is a better team than them, and uh, that seems to be the theme with a lot of this non-conference schedule. Even from an unbiased perspective, Notre Dame's better than a lot of these teams on the schedule, and you couldn't say that in past years. Uh, Notre Dame, I think, should at least go 10-1, and maybe 11-0 and if Michigan State is off to a rough start, but uh, this is kind of it's kind of the year where it's no excuses for this team. Uh, they set themselves up nicely with this schedule. Got to go beat the teams you should beat. And you got to go to Marquette. Well, I think Marquette's coming to Notre Dame, but you got to go to Atlanta and beat Georgia. You have to go win all those bye games. And then uh, you got to at least give MSU a fight to at least look good. And people won't think that he just had hit off a cupcake schedule. So. Uh, really important test for Notre Dame, and Mike Bray seems to have a different approach. Uh, I do like this a little bit more than him just throwing them to the Wolves. Uh, you can tell he's confident with this team a little bit, but uh, wants to give them some time to kind of mesh together and become uh, what we think they can be. So uh, really interesting to see how that those first couple months work out, but uh, Notre Dame seems to be in a decent spot. And uh, obviously the non-conference is really important for them before they go into – uh, ACC play against a better league than they have in the last few years. So thank you guys for watching. God bless. Peace.